Welcome to section 4.1.4 part 3. Wish we'd gotten the other done, but we've got a little bit of process stuff and some calculator stuff uh, to do with the tangent ratio still. Okay, when I was doing my problems before, I was following this process. And I give it to you as a suggestion. What I would do is I would pick the angle that I was going to use and then I would label the sides based on that angle. Then I would select a trig formula. Now, you only have one right now, and so this will come into more play later. Right now, you're using the tangent formula, which is the tangent of the angle equals the opposite over the adjacent sides. Nothing different from what you've done before, it's just now we're going to use the calculator to find the tangent value, or to find the ratio value that we're now calling the tangent. Then I plugged in values, I simplified, and I solved. Now, if you look, there's three different pieces of information. The angle, the opposite side, and the adjacent side. You have to have, or have to have some way of finding at least two of those pieces of information before you plug anything in. If you don't have at least two of those, you won't be able to use this trig formula. So, the way it usually happens is they'll either usually give you an angle and a side, or they'll give you the two sides, in which case they're asking you to find the angle. And we'll talk more about that as we go on. Okay, let's look and see if that is what I did. So here are the problems we did before. The first step I did was pick the angle, then I labeled the sides, and then I put my ratio here, x over eight, the opposite over the adjacent, and then over here, I plugged into the calculator, what is the tangent of 38? And it told me 0.7813. Then I cross multiplied and I simplified. Same thing, Label, pick angle, label triangle, plug in the values. Remember, this is the tangent of 73. Cross multiply and solve. Same thing here, plug in values. I mean, sorry, pick the angle label the sides, plug in your values where they go, the tangent of 45 is 1, cross multiply, and that gives you that value. Okay, now, we went through the examples, now I want to show you how to find the uh, value on your calculator for an angle. Here are some problems that we worked um, one section back. On this one, remember that they gave us this triangle with 50 over 6 being what we would consider. If I were to label this using the newer method that we're talking about, there's the angle I'm going to pick. This side would be the opposite, and this would be the adjacent, and that would be the hypotenuse. Go ahead and label the hypotenuse, even though you're not using it right now. You'll use it in some others. The ratio would be opposite over adjacent, which is 50 over 6. Now, here's what you're going to do to find the angle. To find the angle, on your calculator, you are not going to push the tan, but you're going to push the tan inverse. Let me turn it on and clear the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push second. And then I'm going to push the tan inverse. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see it. And then I'm going to put the ratio here. The ratio is 50 divided by 6. And that ratio is gives me an angle of 83.157. Pretty close to what the chart gave us. But this is a little more exact because the values that we're using are, have the decimal going out much further. Now, let's do it onto this one. We already know the answer is 84 because I've written it on this page, but let's see what the ratio is going to be. If I label this hypotenuse opposite adjacent, this becomes the ratio. And now I'm going to plug that ratio in. Second tangent inverse, tangent minus 1, of 10 divided by 1. Or I could have just put 10 in there. 
and I get 84.28 degrees. As I said, we found it 84 using the table, but the table isn't quite as accurate as the calculator, so we get a little bit more precise answer. Now, if I put that formula on here, then it's going to look like this. The tan minus 1 of the opposite side over the adjacent is going to give me the angle. Okay, so one little piece of calculator stuff for us. If I'm trying to find the sides, I'm going to use tangent. Okay, so I'm going to just write a little note up here. Tangent to find sides and tan minus 1 to find an angle. Okay, so that's what I did. If I plug in numbers like tan of 55, it'll tell me what the value, it'll tell me what the value is for a 55 degree angle. And that would go right here in the place of the tan theta when I'm writing my formulas out. But if somebody said the ratio of the two sides is a half, I could use the second tan inverse. Say 1 divided by 2, or 1 over 2, and it would tell me that that is a 26 degree angle. And little last reminder, when you're using the calculator, make sure that the mode is set so that you are in degree mode. When you get into Algebra 2 and... Uh, Above that, we will teach you what radians are. It's just a different way of measuring, much the same way as you can measure thing in feet or you can measure them in meters. Different measurements measure the same thing. You get a different number. But if your calculator is in the wrong mode, you will get the wrong answer. If you have other questions, um, please see me in class and let me know. Hope this helps. Good luck.